grateful that you're here. There's only a couple of days left until um, the general election. And, of course, yesterday, health and the NHS was the major issue. We know that it is your major issue as the Labour Party. And we know that Boris Johnson has wanted to avoid talking about the NHS because he always wants to bring everything back to Brexit. But the photograph yesterday of this little boy on the front of uh, the Daily Mirror... I do just want to ask you, Jonathan Ashworth, about um, why that little boy was on the floor, what the circumstances are behind that photograph and that incident, which the hospital has acknowledged happened and has apologised for, and the health secretary has acknowledged happened and has apologised for. But in this world of fake news and misreporting, we're getting a lot of people questioning it. I mean, it seems extraordinary that something so critical can be questioned. But just remind people how important that picture is. Well, I mean, first of all, let's just say our heart goes out to the little boy, Jack's family, uh, and Jack himself, obviously. There's also another heartbreaking photo of a little baby, Lily, on the front page of the Daily Mirror today, on a, on a, a waiting on a, a chair because there's no beds. There's another newspaper with a story of a 12-year-old who had to wait over 50 hours for a specialist bed uh, at a hospital in Essex. These are heartbreaking. Mm. Any parent would be angry and fight like a lion for their children. I'm a parent and I would be angry and I would fight for my children. So are these people who are going onto Twitter and Facebook saying it's all staged, it's all fake news, quite frankly, is disgusting mm. and they should have a word with themselves. These are not staged photos. These are parents desperate to do their very best for their children, like any parent would. They are, the... they are awful images, um, but they're not new. You know, I, I ran the Daily Mirror for 10 years. I worked with Kevin there. And that was during a Labour government, predominantly, for almost the entire time. And almost every year, at this time of year, we would have pictures of elderly people on trolleys in you know, uh, down in corridors, we'd have kids on floors, we'd have all this thing. There's nothing new about this. The NHS is creaking at the seams. And we've had successive governments, from Labour to Tory to Labour to Tory, for decades. And none of them have got to grips mm -hmm. with the central problem of a rising population, ageing more than it used to, uh, an abandonment of much of the social care, which meant you can't take people out of hospital when we used to and put them into a sort of midway place. Now they have to stay in hospital. The system can't cope. And rather than everyone just scoring points with each other, don't we try to have to get some cross-party agreement to try and actually fix the central problem of a system set up in the 50s for a population of 50 million that's now having to deal with nearly 70 million and we're getting older? Isn't that really at the heart of this? Well, the system is under intense pressure, as you say, and it's not just children lying on floors or on chairs in hospitals not able to get a bed. As you rightly allude to, it's our elderly relatives, it's our mums and our grandmums on wasting away on trolleys in corridors for hours and hours because they can't get a bed. Part of it is because the Tories have cut 17,000 beds. And one of the messages I want to get over to your viewers today is if I'm elected on Thursday as the nation's health secretary, the Tory bed cuts programme comes to an end on Friday. I will stop these bed cuts from going ahead. But you're right, the whole system is under pressure because we're getting older as a population, which is why we've got to invest in the community care, the social care. Uh, again, it's been cut back by billions under the Tories. But we've got a situation now where, because of the pressures on the hospitals, you're literally queuing to get into the hospital. Mm. You're queuing to get a bed in the hospital, which is why you've got people left on trolleys or babies and children lying on the floor on piles of coats. And you've got elderly people not able to get out of the hospital because the care in the community has been cut back. And when we've got an ageing population, as you rightly say, Piers, we should be investing in that greater support in the community so people can live in their homes longer or they get the support, the specialist nursing help in the wider community or in special, specialist facilities Chris that they need. Ho uh, Chris Hobson, uh, the chief executive of NHS Providers, which is the hospitals and membership group, has said that politicians have actually ducked the big issues in regard to health and social care. He's been writing in The Times to say that all politicians have failed to offer credible answers. Um, the offers from the main parties have varied in scope and ambition, but none has developed a compelling, worked-through and credibly funded long-term solution.
I mean, that's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? If it's your main issue, how come you can't even convince the chief executive of NHS providers that you've got the answer? Well, I mean, there are various bodies representing different health, health think tanks and organisations who have actually pointed out that Labour's spending offer is more than the other parties. We're going to put the money into the NHS after years of cutbacks to health services and social care. And the levels that we're putting in should be enough to improve services. Because I don't want four and a half million people on the waiting list. I want to bring those waiting lists down. If you're, I don't let, me ask, let me ask you something. Yeah. If Labour's the great hope, right, and bear in mind, I edited a national newspaper through many years of Labour presiding of the NHS. They pumped loads of money in. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown didn't make much of a dent in the central problem. But if Labour is the great hope on things like waiting times, how is it that in Wales, where you have control, devolved control over health spending, you've literally just had the worst waiting times in A&E departments in Wales on record? Well, and that's on you. Well, so, why, so why should we trust you nationally if in the place where you do have the control, actually it's failing? Because I, dis I, I disagree with you, Piers, on your characterisation of the last Labour government. Gordon Brown and Tony Blair trebled in cash terms the investment going into the NHS. I just said that. And we had the lowest I just said waiting... they pumped money in. And we had the lowest waiting times on record right, but, but... and the highest satisfaction okay, ratings on record. so how do you record. explain Wales, then? Well, I mean, seriously, I mean... waiting times in Wales is A&E departments in September... 2019, were the worst on record. A higher proportion of patients than ever before waited beyond the four-hour and 12-hour targets in urgent care. Just 75% of patients were admitted, transferred or discharged within four hours. It's been absolutely diabolical yeah, but in Wales. Wales. And, and, and you're in charge there. So my well, point is, yes, you can score political points about all this, but actually in the place where you've been in charge, it's been horrendous. So why don't you just admit that Admit there's a big problem that no one's been able to fix and actually forge a more cross party approach to this. Well, I mean, I'm not personally in charge of Wales, but I take your point. Uh, but obviously, the Wales has to operate within the, the budgets that are set it by the Westminster government. But of course, you've got to look at the wider issues as to why pressures are increasing on the NHS. Yes, it's about cutbacks to social care, but it's also about, it's also about poverty. I and mean, we, we know that people born into poverty, growing up into, into poverty, are more likely to get ill sooner and die quicker. And we've now got a situation across the whole of the United Kingdom where we've got poverty levels going on the roof. Child poverty in this country is going to be higher than it ever was under Margaret Thatcher, higher than, high, the highest level for 60 years. We've actually got across the country now more food banks than McDonald's in this country. And poverty and deprivation is a key driver of ill health in this country. So if you want to deal with the pressures on the NHS, yes, you've got to resolve the social care crisis by we're offering a free personal care proposal, but you've also got to deal with these issues around poverty and deprivation because that is what is causing okay. a, huge amount of, a huge amount of problems right, on three... our GP surgeries and our hospitals. Okay. We're three days away from this election. It's in many ways the most important post-war election we've had in terms of the repercussions. And two parties offering very, very different perspectives. Mm. You know, the Labour Party offering £60 billion of investment into public services and we're going to tax the hell out of everybody to do it uh, and Conservatives going a very different way and they're going to deliver Brexit. So we have a clear choice at the ballot box. Do you believe Labour's going to win? Well, I'm fighting for every single vote. That wasn't the question. Well, I th of course I believe Labour could win. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an optimist in life because, look, people have got to make a decision. Do if they you were that optimistic, why wasn't that your first response? Because <laughs> well, I am an optimist. Well, so you think you're going to win? You, you didn't say yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm saying we are going to win because well, people have got to. People are going to. It wasn't. Well, you didn't have to press me that much. Wasn't exactly filling me with confidence that well, you were going to win when your first you, answer is not yes. You weren't. Well, you weren't exactly you sort of hammering, the hammering, of the hammering me. And going, hammering yes, Piers, we're going to win. Must. Yes, we uh, are going to win. But the, the real same... reason you don't want to say that is because in your heart you know you're probably not going to win. No, no. You're not going to win a majority. Would you accept that? Look, if you look at today's opinion polls or yesterday's opinion polls, then of course that suggests that the Tories are going to win. But in these last couple of days, do we, we? I'm getting across the message. Do people really want five more years of the Tories running our NHS into the ground? Five more years of the Tories with our waiting list growing higher and higher and higher? Five more years of the Tories of even more children on right, the floor you, in if, hospitals? That's the, okay. that's the question if you that lose, people have to ask on this if you lose, on Thursday. If you lose, and Jeremy lose. Corbyn has to stand down... Uh, you've been very visible throughout this campaign. You've been one of their main 
warriors out there. You've been a voice in many ways of common sense and moderation. You've had the guts to come on TV shows like this. On my birthday. If there was a, a vacancy for leader, would you put your hat in the ring? I mean, you're we're a straight not... talker. You're an uh, honest man. Uh, we're not going to lose. I'm going to be the health secretary on Friday and I'm going to stop the Tory bed cuts programme. So you'll never stand for leader? <laughs> I don't want to be the leader of the Labour Party. I want to, really? be, the nation, I want to be the nation's health secretary. So just to stopping, clarify, stopping you... Stopping the bed cuts programme. You, Mr Ashworth, unequivocally we will are gonna, never run for leader. Is that what you're gonna, saying? Uh, 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 People don't, people don't want me to be leader of the Labour Party. People, I want to be the health secretary. That wasn't the stopping question. The, I'm not going to... I'm a straight talker. <laughs> I'm not going to be... Are you it, stating we unequivocally, are have a Labour in a way that we can play back in years to come, are you stating unequivocally you will never run for leader? Yeah, never I don't, say I don't never. Want, I, I don't want to be leader of the Labour Party. I want never. to be the health you, secretary. You will never run for leader. I, 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 I never. I don't want to be the leader, <laughs> Labour, Labour leader. I want to be the nation's health secretary stopping the Tory bed it. cuts. I get it, but just one more time, you will never run I, for leader. I, I'm not running for leader. I don't want to be leader of the Labour Party. I want to be the health. I want to be the okay. Labour health secretary. I look forward to Some playing that back here. Some people might want you to be leader, yeah. John Ashworth. Who might? Yeah, I've heard people talking about you as potential leadership material, no, you but if you, don't if you don't think you are, that's fine. No one says that. All right, if you don't think you're a leader, that's fine. We'll take your word for it. Sean Ashworth, thanks very much indeed.